Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to watch the second video from Palmer Public Library. If you watched the first one, you remember that we started a story with this little puppet here. And this rabbit came on stage and then was surprised by a monster. So I asked you, what does the monster look like? And what happens next? And it was so fun to get your ideas. Ewan, age five, sent a picture of, he writes, a wormy kind of guy with no eyes and three people feet and is very hairy. Jesse, age five, sent this picture and this monster can throw fire. Phoebe, age eight, when she wrote this, now age nine, happy birthday, Phoebe, said, I think the monster should be the chess monster or an extremely elephantine rabbit that the rabbit in the story and the rabbit in the story can only see that monster's paws. Well, the chess monster refers to a painting that I did of a monster playing chess with a little girl in a, in a, in a garden. And you can see that the monster is probably losing this chess game. Willow, age three, said a smooth purple monster with two blue eyes wearing an orange t-shirt and big yellow shoes. The monster says, hop, 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 rawr. Josephine, age two and a half, thinks the monster looks like scary carrots. Daniel, age six, thinks the monster should have a sword and armor and maybe he sees the monster eating someone. Okay, so let's see. These are great. So, okay, uh, I, think, I think I can combine all of those ideas. It would be fun to try anyway, to mix them, combine them all together. And when I need to come up with ideas, I like to sketch. So I'm just gonna grab a pencil. And let's see, so a uh, monster with armor can be the, 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 could be, if the, it could be that the big elephantine rabbit monster is wearing armor. We can combine those ideas. And let's see, what else? Fire and an orange t-shirt and scary carrots and the chess monster. What if the chess monster what if the what if the chess monster okay what if what if the big maybe the maybe the chess monster is wearing not an orange t-shirt but an orange maybe a bathrobe or uh something that covers its whole its tail like well, like maybe mon maybe monster pajamas have cover a tail like like a onesie like a monster onesie would have a tail too i don't know anyway the so the if the monster is wearing if the chess monster is wearing orange pajamas and uh and a green nightcap then from above maybe the big rabbit monster thinks that the chess monster is a carrot and so the so the so the the elephantine rabbit monster is chasing the chess monster thinking that the chess monster is a carrot and and then oh oh because then the the monster the rabbit monster is wearing armor but instead of a sword it uh it has a fork Ooh, because the, oh and then and then we can put uh can use fire uh, from jesse's monster on the helmet and that's where the that's where the the rabbit monster roasts vegetables. So the monster sticks them with a fork and then roasts them on the helmet. And then okay, so uh, and then and then that monster that and three feet on that one. So a three-footed uh, armored monster with yellow feet, yellow shoes, and chasing after a scary carrot. That's not really a carrot, but it's wearing an orange pajamas, so it looks like a carrot. So what happens then was the other question. And Zachary, age two and a half, said the rabbit hides behind a tree. Now that seems like a good idea because first of all, that seems like something you would do. And also a tree is, that would be a useful thing to have the puppets go behind and then I could switch puppets. I mean, I could, I could make a running rabbit puppet, for example that runs behind the tree, and then a different puppet could peek out, you know, a, a, I could make the rabbit change expression and look out from behind the tree. So, 
Okay, so something that's fun about puppetry, so one of the things I really like about puppetry is you have the story that you want to tell, and then you have to think about how you're actually going to do it, how you're going to show it to the audience. And you have to engineer that, which means you have to you have to figure out exactly how the machinery of it is going to work. How are you going to make your puppets when there's there's no instructions and there's no there's no directions to follow. We just have to we're just going to figure it out as we go and solve problems as they come along. So so let's see now. I'm going to need to make some puppets. I'll need to make a running rabbit puppet, and then I think. The chess monster will be running too, running away from the big elephantine armored vegetable roaster monster. And then I'll need to make vegetable roaster monster puppet, puppet also. And then I'll need to make the tree too. And then I think the chess monster and the rabbit maybe can look out from behind the tree. Okay, so now I can start making puppets. I'm going to use the original rabbit puppet as reference because when I make the running rabbit puppet, I want to make sure it looks like the same character. Same size, same shape, same clothes, same character, just a different position. And the chess monster should be a little bit bigger than the rabbit. I think I'd better color this puppet in because it's important we see that the monster is wearing orange pajamas. That's what makes the monster look like a carrot. Each one has a stick glued to the back. The roaster monster is pretty thin, so I think I better reinforce it with an extra stick glued to the back of that part. Now for the tree. I'll draw puppets that are looking out from behind it. And I think if I glue them to coffee stirs, I can operate them as levers. Now to paint a background so it looks like the tree is deep in a forest. I think I'll make some extra foliage for above the tree also. Now I can hang the tree and the background behind it foliage in front of it. Now we're ready to start our show. Oh, whoops, wait a minute. You know what I didn't think about? The new puppets are too big to fit in the wings. Hmm. Well, this is what I meant by solving problems as they come along. This is going to take a little while, but I'll make the video go fast. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. 
Maybe I can hide over this way. Nope, not over there. Tree, tree, tree. This is an interesting situation we've gotten our characters into, and what we need now is an ending. So my question for you is, how does the story end? If you have ideas about that, you can write them in the comments below, or send them to me in an email at yspalmerlibrary at gmail.com. I'll use your ideas to make the ending to our play in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.